And here's some pictures from Lake George, uh, New York, where they had the New York State Open. Great tournament. There's uh, my cousin Mary and one of the chess players, uh, Ed Small. He's from here, from Binghamton, New York, outside of Binghamton and Vestal. It's really cool. And there's uh, one of the boats. It's at night, so it's a little dark, but it's a pretty cool place. Very, very beautiful, very peaceful at uh, Lake George, New York. And there's a picture of me looking up. I was kind of goofing around there looking up the dress of the... Uh, the Indian statue there and so there's me I'm on the right of course my cousin Mary here's I got getting ready to parasail pretty cool stuff maybe I have the nerve someday I'll try it uh, ducks are all over the place in the lake pretty nice some more scenes during the day on the boats around the area just past the boats there is basically the main drag of Lake George a lot of shops a lot of restaurants a lot of traffic really nice and there's that guy that was parasailing. There he is in the air. And there's another picture of him there. And there he is when he's way up. Now it's funny, when I snap the picture, I want to get some of the boats in the lake in the background. Uh, these two young girls with their kid. I was kidding with them. I said, oh, you're going to be on my YouTube channel. And one girl goes, oh, no. So there's the picture after they walked away of the uh, one of the dock areas in the lake. Pretty nice. And there's the carousel on the far end. They have a little kitty like a park thing where they have, you see on the left there, the thing that goes up and down and drops. It's basically like the huge ones in the big amusement parks, but just for kids. They have a little bumper car set up, like bumper cars on water, a little miniature golf. It's pretty cool. It's basically a kid's park, period. Here's a picture of me at one of the tables. Uh, I was at the Tiki Hotel on Canada Street in Lake George. There's a picture of me. Boy, I'll tell you, when you see a picture of yourself, you can tell how old you're getting. And there's me again. Uh, you'll see if I show the games on YouTube how well I did, good or bad. And there I am again playing. And I'll tell you, it's tough for us old guys to try to concentrate playing chess, but we love to play. So, And there's the main playing hall in the Tiki Hotel. Uh, it's, it's a lot bigger than it looks. It was a really great turnout on both sides. They have a stage on the right-hand side with the uh, high-rated players set a little bit above. And on the left a long set of booths, which was kind of nice, because you got to sit by yourself, just you and your opponent in a booth, and it was pretty cool. And there's Steve there, the uh, tournament organizer. He works for uh, Bill Goitsberg and uh, Continental Chess Association. They run a good tournament. And there's me on the left there, between the young kid and the guy with the white hair there. There's a little better picture. You can see me right next to the kid in the white shirt. And the hall, like I said, it was nice. Uh, a few years ago, they had it a different place in the Tiki. This is much better than they used to have it. And there's me again. That's my last round game. We're just getting ready to start. I'm adjusting my pieces. And there's some more of the players in the playing hall. Me again. Trying to win desperately. And there's the playing hall there. And there is the video and some of the pictures from my time at Lake George, New York for the New York State Open. Hi, folks. John Cordesco here. I hope you enjoyed the pictures from Lake George, New York. I wish I had some better ones, maybe even some more pictures. But it's tough trying to relax and play chess and take pictures. So this is my round one game. I am white. I'm rated about 1,500. My opponent's last name is Keith. He's rated 1299, we'll say 1300. So I haven't played in a tournament since October 2014 with the Millionaire Chess. Now I played in my local tournaments here, but it's always the same guys over and over. So this is my first time going out of town in a tournament in a year and a half. So let's see how I do. I'm white. My opponent is black. We'll go through the opening a little bit. It's basically a Petra off that. I didn't want to really get into the theory of it, so I just went knight c3. D3. Just, I just wanted to get settled in. I mean, it's earlier in the morning. I'm not a morning person. And being I'm only on the two-day schedule, I've got to play three rounds that day. And the first two games are only game 60 because you've got to catch up being early on a two-day schedule instead of three. Interesting might have been instead the computer likes D4. And I actually thought about that after E takes, Knight takes, 
Knight C6, and you know, it's it is what it is, just an opening. After D3, he went Bishop G4 and Bishop B2, he moves his knight out. Okay. Things are going along okay. I mean, it's want to be solid, like I said. Give Peter like C5 and then castle for me. But after knight to D7, bishop B3, C6. Now, I just, I don't get this here. Sometimes you do things at the board and you look at it later and you see these ghosts and, oh, man, it's horrible. I was I was worried he was going to go D5. What do you do? That knight on F3 is guarding D5. So I wasted a tempo and moved the bishop again. Probably why I should have moved him to begin with. That way, when he goes at D5, there's no problem. I probably should have went H3 to kick the bishop, but after bishop takes, bishop takes. That would have been fine. But I wasted a tempo. He moved the bishop up. I kicked the bishop. He took. I took. Probably should have castled, but he went knight to b6. So I'm a little frustrated. I moved the bishop twice. It's an okay position. There's nothing to write home about. I'm 200 rating points higher than my opponent. I should have a better position. But we only are on move 9, so. Queen of d2 for me. Now I'm considering, seriously considering castling long. d5. Opens it right up. I take the knight. Bishop takes. Now, as you can see, we have opposite color bishops now. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. I castle. He castles. Okay. There's nothing to write home about. Actually, the computer shows a dead even. And I say dead even, I mean 0 0.00. I have the computer on off screen. So here we are. Not very exciting stuff, but like I said, I was just trying to get solid. I wasn't trying to get too fancy. Just get back in the groove a little bit. So I decided to move my rooks to the center of the board, as you're, you know, always taught. Now, interesting that the computer gave this move a double question mark, which is basically blunder or borderline. I didn't think it was that bad. The computer likes bishop to g5. Then after I moved the queen, f5. With a small advantage for white, nothing serious. He went queen to c7 instead. And I jumped from basically even to about a one and a quarter point advantage. So I didn't think it was that bad. Now, bishop takes d5 is the computer's choice. I have no idea why I didn't do it. I really don't. Should have just taken the pawn. Should have just taken the pawn. But I didn't. I went B3. No idea why. Absolutely none. I've been trying to wreck my brain, trying to figure it out. Just a mental lapse, apparently. I should have played Bishop Takes. Rook A to C8. And Bishop back to B3. And then A6. And I'm sitting good. Up a pawn. Nice solid position. But after B3. Now I do have to say, time was getting kind of short here. Early on game 60, we weren't real short yet, but it was starting to tick away. At this point, I'm a little embarrassed for a couple of things. One, the position is not that great, but basically the, the real story of it is I'm using so much time, and I should be moving better. I should be playing better. Now, after I do my blunder, I wouldn't call B3 a blunder, just a miss, a miss cue. Queen to C6, and computer didn't like that at all. What the computer liked was E4. Knight to B5, queen moves. Pawn takes. Queen takes. E takes. Rook takes, rook takes. Knight D7. E4 was the move. And now I'm in trouble. Two pawns for a piece. Yeah, I controlled it E-file, but this is going to be tough sledding. He missed that. He went queen to C6. Knight takes. Knight takes. C4. I really didn't sacrifice a piece because I saw this, of course. 
He goes e4. Finally, I play pawn takes first, threatening the queen. You don't want to play pawn takes here. Because the knight can move. We can just move the queen. C takes, threat in the queen. Queen takes. Rook takes. Now the computer went back and forth on this. I played rook takes. But bishop takes or rook takes. Is. About the same. I'm talking about hundreds of a point. But interesting move though the computer had on here as well is. Queen to e2, which I didn't even think of. That's interesting. Very interesting. You're threatening a lot here. It's not as good as the other one, but it was worth considering. But I took with a rook. Not as good as taking with a pawn. And after queen takes, rook takes, bishop c3, and of course I lose the exchange. He went queen to b5. Right about this time now, we're on move 20. And I've got my notation on my score sheet. I've got about five minutes left. But I'm still continuing to keep score because there's a 10 second delay on the game 60. Uh, in this tournament, it's a 10 second delay. It's not an increment, it's a delay. So I was recording still. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm getting really low on time. Let's get rid of the queens, make it a lot less complicated. But he wanted no part of that. So he backs the queen off in the corner. I take check, rook takes, I go a4. b6, cutting the scope of the queen dramatically. Queen to c4, try to trade again. He wants no part of it, goes queen a5. I move bishop up. Now he's got some problems. He's got some problems, this young man. He can play b5, maybe. King of fate to get out of the check. Rook to f8 is probably the safest choice. But he decides to go for it and check now the queen checks. Now he's thinking after king here. A lot of things can go on. He can check me again here. He can check with a bishop. So I want king. And what's he going to do now? I mean, he's, he's okay. But this is where I think he loses it a little bit because he was getting short on time as well. He made a very human move. Bishop e5 check. But what he missed was f4. Now he's basically doomed. That f pawn is going to drop for him. And his king's in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Because when I check, he can't go back in the corner because of the mate. So he panics. And he goes 8-6. Now, I play the human move. I took the pawn. But probably the better move was queen to c8 check, king h7, queen f5, and chase him around. I pick up a bunch of pawns. Or bishop takes f7 check. But I decided to go after the piece instead. He takes with check. Now he's thinking he's got a perpetual. So if I go back here, he checks me again. If I go back here, he does the same. Then he can always come back to here. So I go g3. He checks me again for he's got a perpetual, but what he missed was bishop g2 saves. Saves the perpetual. Now it's over. He pushes a pawn. We go through a collect couple of moves. Checks. f6. h5. Queen. He won't trade, of course. I push the pawn up. He finally takes. And that's the end of it. Young man finally resigns. We played a few more moves out than this. I just stopped recording because I was so low on time. We're on move 38, and it's game 60. But it just is doomed. I, we just moved our kings up. And then with the off move I have with my bishop, he's just, he's just doomed. So there it is, round one. I uh, lucked out my first win.
I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, look for other games coming up. It's a five-round tournament, so I've got four more games to show. And I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.